In this video, we continue our study of multivariate functions by looking at the function z equals cos of x plus y squared. Now, even though this function is more complicated than some of the ones we've seen before, we can still perform some experiments to see what the shape might look like and try to visualize it, which will make it easier to recognize when we maybe see a computer-generated form of it. We'll start with the same idea as we had before, which is picking a value for one of the variables. 0 is a nice convenient number, x is the first variable, so we experiment with that first. If we do that substitution, then we end up with the graph of z equals cos of 0 plus y squared, but cos of 0 is just 1, so we end up with z equals 1 plus y squared, assuming that x equals 0. Now what does that actually entail for us? What this is describing is the intersection between the surface and the zy plane, or yz plane. Because if we draw the third dimension, the x on here, if we go out to x equals 0 only, the only variable left is y as an input, and that'll dictate what the z value is. What we then have is a parabola opening upwards, the y squared, and we also have 1 plus that, so it shifts it up by 1. So along the yz plane, we're going to see an upwards opening parabola starting with its vertex at height 1. Now what if we move out along x? So we take a step out to pi over 4. What would we then see along the line described by that trajectory, or that x value? Well, at x equals pi over 4, we would have z equals cosine of x, cos of pi over 4, plus y squared again, unchanged, and cos of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2. It's one of our famous angles. And this again is another parabola, but this time the shift is, or the intercept is, and let's be specific here, the z-intercept is going to be at 1 over root 2, a little lower. And then if we continue, say to pi over 2, we'll have z equals cos of pi over 2 plus y squared, but cos of pi over 2 is simply 0. So that's going to give us another parabola, same shape, except now the intercept is 0. Let's see if we can put all this together. Describing the shape of the surface, what we would see is a parabola, say at height 1 here, that then gets moved down as we move in the x direction. So this direction here would be the x direction. And what we'd see is that sine curve, or that cosine curve rather. We'd be going down first, and then back up, and behind this surface here, and then down again, while in the other direction, this would be the y direction, we would have our parabolas. So a parabola with intercept 1, a parabola maybe with intercept 0, down in the valley a parabola with intercept negative 1, all the values that come out of the cosine function. So we'd see this marching line of cosine. Let's take that back. So we'd see this parabola in a marching line going down then up, down then up, down then up, coming towards us out of the page. Again, indicating how a quick analysis of the elements of the function, the ingredients of the function, plugging in some regular, plugging in some distinctive values for either x, or we could have done it with y, but x is what we chose, gives us some sense of how the surface over top would be formed by these little cross sections. And here we can see again the cross sections built up to become and develop the entire surface.